podcast world. So I'll say good morning, good afternoon, or good night. Thanks so much for joining us on the regular to the Sports Line podcast. And if you are a first timer, we hope to hook you for good. Hey, our general focus, as always, is sports from an athlete, coach, official, executive. And a, of course, a Golden Horseshoe perspective. And, of course, my favorite would be a broadcasting perspective. And today, we take that route with someone very special to so many in this region. From his humble days and first taste of television and radio in Sault Ste. Marie, this Mississauga native was destined for more. With an offer of making $35 a sportscast, Paul Hendricks soon became one of the most trusted sportscasters at CHCH in the 1980s. His appreciation for sports on a local level was showcased on the CHCH staple OUA Game of the Week, where dreams came true for so many university-level athletes. After leaving to host the Toronto Maple Leafs hockey games, a relatively new specialty station by the name of Leafs TV stepped forward, and the man known to most as Henny wowed us with his knowledge, smile, and master of the English language. Mm. Paul Hendrick, you're here at CHCH, and it's a good feeling for me because I'll tell you this right off the top. My love for sports broadcasting had a lot to do and what you and your pack in that 1980s did at CHCH, and uh, it's great to be sitting here with you years later. Uh, thanks so much, Bob. Uh, you know, I, I think back to my first broadcast, December 5th, 1981, uh, working alongside a legend in Norm Marshall, just as nervous as I can be, uh, getting through that 30 minutes at 6 o'clock that evening, uh, 30 seconds later, a call into the control room from Dan McLean saying, welcome to the family. Uh, it's a part of the family. Uh, I I've never left and getting a chance to come back to the new digs here um, and seeing this younger generation they just felt like nephews and nieces and in some cases maybe grandchildren right but we were all family we're all part of the CHCH family so so thanks for having me back and thanks for a great info that, that, that just does wonders for my heart well it's an important part of, of our area and you are well remembered I go f- few places where your name is not brought up and, and and the many people that you worked with but I gotta ask you what are you up to now what's going on retired and uh, you traveling a lot with my wife and you know we've spent uh, a lot of time in Spain especially the last three years most of our winters mm-hmm. I'm a big Real Madrid fan I'm a big history fan a culture and art uh, didn't get to see a lot of Toronto Maple Leaf hockey and, and other things right but that's okay uh, you're heading off in a different direction but I do love Real Madrid football <laughs> Ball and I, I, I get to quite a few games. It's expensive, but it's so much fun. But just spending more time with my wife. But I'll be honest, I'm getting a little itchy. I could use a project or two and uh, would always be open to, to getting back into the business because my brain's still relatively sharp and I feel good. Well, I'll tell you, and I'm glad you clarified this about this this European vacation stuff because yeah. every time I see you on Facebook or pictures, yeah. I'm like, where is he, the French Riviera? Yeah. And how come he keeps getting out to these places that I'm dreaming about? So yeah. uh, again, semi-retirement's treating you well. It is. And, and you know, I, I my wife uh, uh, got sick uh, 2015, November 2015, you know, like, uh, with cancer. Um, nine years later, she's still going strong. Mm. But, I, but I did realize that after her first recurrence four years later in 2019, that let's do some other things and uh, Alicia's worked so hard educated McMaster Medical School both kids born here at Hamilton St. Joe's this is our hometown and uh, let's just make good with the time we have because for all of us you just don't know Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we've made great use of that Mm -hmm. and that's going to to Madrid where her mother is from Mm -hmm. uh, and and staying there and getting to know the city getting to know the country better and I've been going there for 37 years but uh, the last few years are getting to stay put, not having to be rushed to do A, B, and C. Right. Oh, we'll do that next week or we'll do that mm-hmm. this week. has been a real lesson in education. Well, I'm sure to your, you were, where you were in terms of, I mean, I know what it's like to just being in this business and, yeah. and the dedication in terms of hours that you have to commit if, oh. you, if you want to be good and you want to do your job properly. Mm-hmm. But then you kind of stepped it up by go, being with the Leafs and following them on the road. And boy, that's, I mean... I try to tell people because I had little stints with it at Sportsnet where I was with the Leafs on the road and I know you and I connected several times up in the media booth and it's a wonderful thing because you get to see different cities and the Leafs playing and it's a special thing but boy it's a grind it's a grind 
and I knew at, you know, at that point uh, in 2020, I had the opportunity to come back for another year. I just wanted to finish the half year into COVID and then get out. And they just, no, nah, that's not going to work for us. Are you good to go now? And I said, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. But it was a, it was a great grind. Mm -hmm. But the research involved, mm -hmm. oh my God. I, I remember I did a morning stint with Don Landry at the fan. I was mm -hmm. co-hosting with him. We had a game against the Flyers the night before. And we had Dr. Andrews on, you know, phenomenal orthopedic surgeon, and I had so much work, and Don just looked at me and just said, keep asking the questions. I didn't get home until midnight that night, and I was up at 4 a.m. the next morning mm -hmm. and in there for 5.15, and just the preparation. Uh, but it's so grateful and, 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 and tremendously felt that when you leave these things and you've done your homework that you haven't left anything on the table. Mm -hmm. You've got to be prepared. And what an opportunity for us. You've always been a people person. For me, it's why I got into the job. I, in our condominium, I can go up an elevator and not know who they are, but I'll start asking questions. Mm -hmm. I, you, I'm just very inquisitive about it. We all have stories to tell, and it could be you were uh, the best football player at, you know, at Nelson back in the day, or, or not even the best <laughs> football player. Assumption, please. Or assumption. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think a Lee Knight and, you know, him coming out of oh. you know, Burlington High School football and playing junior ball and then going to to the Tiger Cats mm -hmm. and you know being a professional football player we all have stories to tell I think they're really interesting tell me a story about your transition because your first job in television yeah. is doing radio and television <laughs> in Sault Ste. Marie yeah how did you get to Hamilton so I did news for a year in the Sioux. Then I got into sports, which is what I wanted to do. Terry Chris, coach of the Greyhounds, all of that. Summer of 81, uh, I, I was coming down for a friend's wedding in Belleville, and I put in tapes in Windsor, CHCH, City TV, checks in Peterborough, CJOH, late Brian Smith interviewed me, and just trolling, just hoping to see if something would come up. Well, a few months later, uh, early November, 12.30 at night, I get a call from Dick Beddoes. <laughs> and I thought it was a prank. I thought it was a prank from one of my colleagues. And I'm not going to say what I said to this guy, like, knock it off in more or less terms. And Dick goes, do you want the job or not? And I said, it really, it's you. And I, then I remember when I got to work at CHCH, Dick would do the 11. He would be in his office just doing stuff he wouldn't head home to Etobicoke until well after one in the morning he was just hanging around uh, like a, a studio rat uh, and I said I'm coming it was 35 bucks a newscast I would do Monday I mean Saturday Sunday 6 and 11 and we had a 12 35 uh, noon a newscast on Sunday so mm -hmm. and Wednesdays when Dick worked uh, for our CHCH game he was oh, a, yes. in between intermission guest and analyst so I had five that was six newscasts a week, six times 35, $210 a week. But he knew I could live at home in Mississauga and Lorne Park. So I took it, and uh, what an opportunity it was. 17 years at Channel 11, worked with the greatest of people, and we're, we're family members for life, and that includes you. Mm -hmm. it, it's amazing to think of those humble beginnings, and you meet so many people, and in the <laughs> job that we work, it's so impossible not to bond with particular people. And, you know, I, I, I can think about, you know, the names that, of the past that I certainly looked at when I was watching television. Mm -hmm at a young age but I'll tell you one of the things as much as I loved what you did at CHH as a sportscaster myself playing high school football yeah. and watching the OUA game of the week I mean and I know to this day I am walking around the community and people are begging us yeah. now costs you know we've been able to do a couple of things a year we think we did the Yates Cup for about four or five years we've done some OG HL hockey mm -hmm. but the OHL uh, OUA game of the week was a as I said earlier that was a staple of this station. I was just going to say it was a staple, a cornerstone. And I don't know whether it was part of the CRTC mandate when uh, was CHCH was given its license and had to continue to repeat that they needed so much Canadian content. Well, 1954, I think when the station came on board, of course, 70th anniversary coming up, they started doing games, um, and Norm Marshall called those games. Mm -hmm. And we're talking cameras that weighed three tons each, not <laughs> the stuff we have now, and the crews having to set that up. And at most, a three-camera shoot, you know, mm -hmm. a wide, 
tight and an end zone camera. Uh, and that was pretty much what we had, although we had a few handhelds as well. Mm -hmm. But it was a staple. And even to this day, I will run into uh, people who have graduated uh, from the OUA ranks uh, in John Graffy, this was just a few years ago at a, a, par a party up in Collingwood. Mm -hmm. Henny, how are you? And John, how are you? Tell my wife how great I was, is John's <laughs> second wife. And she just started rolling her eyes. Uh, you know, he was really good. He was uh, he was part of a Laurier team that was able to beat Western in Western. Mm -hmm. That wasn't easy to do. So I loved running into all those people. Mm -hmm. But that was like our NFL. And it was always important to mention where these kids went to high school. And if you knew them, we knew who their coaches were. Uh, who who the uh, the teachers were that uh, enabled this great athlete to go to this institution mm -hmm. and to get a chance to play Saturday. I think that was part of our, our folklore was telling where these athletes came from, and they were from all over Ontario. You mm -hmm. mentioned a high school. I can probably come up with a name or two that went from that high school on to play uh, OUA. OUA Sports now it was OUAA back then. Oh yes, yeah, so you're right, OUAA. And and you know I watched pulled up a couple of those broadcasts. You know to prepare for you and I speaking. Yeah. And there was one uh, done at Western. Uh, Andy Fantuz, yeah. my broadcast partner at Die Cats TV, and and just looking at it and the way so professionally done yeah and I think that's why it stood out that game of the week because it stood up to anything at the time yes and the effort and the people that were working in the truck the preparation that I know you put together oh. the, the the call that whether it was you doing it or Norm Marshall doing yeah. it like what a presentation it was yeah and it, it, it's just a product of passion we loved it and it's Saturdays I mean Friday nights was always game prep at home mm -hmm. uh, inevitably I'd have been on a campus that week doing an interview with an athlete that would run as our, our halftime profile. Mm -hmm. That was the best part, going over to London, going over to, to Laurier, Guelph, mm -hmm. uh, getting to Mike, a coach, getting to talk to these athletes who love the attention, and why wouldn't they love mm -hmm. the attention, right? We were putting them on the front of the marquee. Uh, it was it was tremendous, and, and some of the great games, especially basketball at the House of Slam up in Guelph, mm -hmm. when Western was great, Guelph was great, Mac always great, and Brock, mm -hmm. you know, under Ken Murray. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken. Some of those those games were, and then inevitably it got so big, they had to move them inside Cops Coliseum mm -hmm. because there were getting seven, 8,000 fans mm -hmm. for these games. I think television had a great deal to do with it, and I feel proud that we had a great deal to do with the passion we brought to it. And I think, you know, uh, Dave Wilson, uh, one of our early directors, uh, and then Phil LaChapelle uh, as well, continuing the trend of, of, of university sport. And the university is giving us carte blanche with what we wanted to do. Um, they love the publicity. And I'm, I miss that the games are not on CHCH anymore. Yeah, it, it, it really was tremendous. And you just listed off. I mean, Ken Murray, I think of like Joe Razzo. Like these guys were like as big as NBA. Like they, yeah. that's how big it was. And, and really, when I think about it, really, where we've come so far, with the growth of basketball yeah. right now because of individuals yes. like that. It's because, you know, now we're, now we're producing Shea Gilgis Alexander, <laughs> who's a possible NBA MVP right out of Steel Top Town. Top five right now. players on the entire planet. Exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all, you know, and Hamilton and the, the love for its sports. But like it all, whizzes, there's an mm. end game. Oh, and no. one day. Yep. You leave for the Maple Leafs. Yeah. What happened? I got an opportunity. Uh, I, I remember it was Tiger Woods' first Canadian Open, and I was at Glen Abbey covering that for our station here. And uh, Ron Harrison Sr. called me up. And I, my heart starts leaping. And he said, how committed to Hamilton and CHCH are you? And I said, I'm only committed to my family. Why do you ask, Ron? He said, well, we'd like to offer you uh, the hosting job midweek. And I said, I'll take it. He said, I haven't even offered you a salary. I said, throw it a number. He threw it a number. I said, I'll take it. He said, oh my God. I Shouldn't there be some bargaining here? <laughs> he could have said free and I, I would have gone. And it wasn't a reflection of leaving Channel 11. It was an opportunity to host Maple Leaf Hockey. Mm -hmm. And so I went in the next day to their offices and signed the contract. And I remember telling my wife that if I've got this job in December, I'm going to feel grateful. Because you never say no to a challenge. And you've got to push yourself but was I truly confident no it was a whole different level I was comfortable at channel 11 you mm -hmm. know you've been there for 17 years but it was it was a good time to go mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that that to me was just uh, an amazing amazing moment and then the nervousness of having to tell Phil LaChapelle 
it was, it was like breaking up a marriage or leaving a girlfriend, vice versa. He and I were so connected. Yeah. I remember our last football game was uh, at York University, Waterloo in York. Uh, we had done our broadcast, and that day um, his wife called my wife and just say, Phil's just so depressed and Alicia was going so is Paul mm -hmm. but we both ended up going Phil to CBC uh, me to Molson Sports and Entertainment to, mm -hmm. to do Leaf Hockey and uh, those are some of the tough decisions but uh, necessary decisions and what an adventure the Leafs were beyond that. Well you said the word comfort and I think once we do get comfortable that's an indication mm -hmm. that you know what maybe it's time for a new challenge and and I tell people this all the time because I've actually had the luxury of doing uh, both and th there's a wonder to working in the studio and working with your colleagues yeah. and and it's so much fun and you, you grind together to put together that newscast and Team. that sports cast and you argue and you bicker and I want more time I need less time more weather needs more time like, nothing's changed <laughs> nothing's changed no. that still goes on yeah. right now and but then there's something about covering live events yeah. it's it, it, it's a high oh. that you just can't beat I I used to write uh, a two-minute opening. Mark Askin, our producer, would give me the shot list. Mm -hmm. And from that shot list, seven seconds of, of this player, six and a half of this coach, crowd noise for this, I would put together, it was, it was a poem uh, that would set us up for that game. But try doing that 52 to 53 times a year and coming up with different stuff. It was not easy. But you always did it. I always did. And I, I remember John Shannon took over at least TV and said, we're not doing Doing that anymore and I was I was kind of relieved but it was a great run but not only that um, being prepared for that open where you're three and a half minutes live uh, either on the ice up in the stands or between the benches mm -hmm. you know 30 seconds have a good show everybody buddy and I may just trying to keep the heart suppressed trying to keep my thoughts reminding myself enjoy this mm -hmm. enjoy this because let's be honest you're ner you're nervous you've been prepping for this for the uh, the last 18 hours mm -hmm. going through it going through it and as soon as the opens done and if it's done well you're so relieved because the interview parts and all the rest of the game was so easy but that opening especially I remember we were in Long Island it was the first game back after Darcy Tucker had taken out uh, Mike Pecos knee in that playoff <laughs> series mm -hmm. and the crowd you talk about violent and loud and walking across the parking lot from the Marriott in Long Island to the Nassau County Coliseum and they knew who we were and oh my god it was as if I took Pekka's knee out and and uh, just you get psyched up for that but you also realize you've got about a million people watching but you're just connected yeah. to the guys in the truck Mark Askin you know and Mark's in my ear the entire time and just keeping me settled and mm -hmm. and all of that but it's the teamwork you talked about around here I, I, I want more time I, I, I need this it's it's teamwork mm -hmm. and, and that for me is what I'm always going to remember uh, whether it was here at Channel 11 or or uh, working with our Leaf crew uh, the group that come together over a period of time and then you get older and all of a sudden is where the hell did that time all go mm -hmm. and it's a whole new group of people coming in and doing the same thing and sharing those same emotions mm -hmm. and I salute them now um, I do miss a lot of it but I'm also happy with where my life's at now and, and able to move forward and into a new chapter you work with a guy by the name of Joe Bowen can yeah. you can you tell that our listeners and viewers what Joe Bowen is like I mean how many years he's been calling games like well uh, <laughs> 40. It's over 3,000 games. Yeah, 40. Joe, to be able, whether it be television, now more so on radio because, you know, he can lift you out of your seat and make the hair on the back of your neck stand on end and to capture the emotion of a game and to do it and ad lib. There are no catchphrases, oh, if this happens, I'd better remember this. Mm -hmm. I remember coming back from co-hosting uh, the Hamilton Telethon. I had a portion of it, a Children's Hospital Telethon, and Toronto's in Ottawa trying to stay alive uh, down three games to two and they blocked every shot under you know under the sun and and, and I remember his call you know God bless you boys and and, and I'm, I'm crossing the Bronte Bridge and I'm going what a call and I was uh, it just blew me away um, and then of course you know recently with we're going to Boston buddy and we're going to get the job oh done. yeah Hey, he, he, that was every Leaf fan right on board, and Joe was able to pick them up in the palm of his hands. And Joe's 72 now, and as you get older, uh, things don't 
get easy. Uh, you know, we all have our ailments, but Joe still has the passion and the fire in his stomach and in his heart. Um, he's just an outstanding broadcaster. You know, there's a lot of talk, hey, you know, Joe should be on TV, and I'd love to see him on television as well. You've got Chris Cuthbert there, who's mm -hmm. not only a tremendous broadcaster, but a first ballot Hall of Fame person. Absolutely. And, and so I stay right out of that. They're both great at what they do, uh, not for different reasons, but for, for in, in different ways. Uh, but Joe Bowen, to me, is the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And, no doubt. And, and that's out of respect to all involved. No, no doubt. But you know what, I'll be, uh, Annie, maybe you agree, maybe you don't agree. Mm -hmm. And I, I know there was a time where Joe was on television. Mm -hmm. And because of the nature of television and the commercial breaks and the, all the kinds of things, and, you know, th there's just so much going on. I thought... I wasn't hearing the real Joe on television, but when it's on the radio and with the guy he's with, yes, like I just feel radio was a better fit for him. Uh, do you agree? Yes, but he still we. I know in our midweek broadcast we got to do. He and Harry got to do an awful <laughs> lot of what they wanted to do and stay. I remember one game. Curtis Joseph, I think we're in Carolina, and he is so acrobatic and athletic, and and uh, I'm on the sideline just looking at that. And Henny, what do you see? And I said, like, Jesus, Mary, and Curtis Joseph, that was incredible. And Joe goes, you can't say that. I said, I just did, and I meant it. You know, uh, we got to do quite a bit of what we wanted to do. It mm -hmm. is a little more formatted, I know, mm -hmm. uh, I, I agree. And, you know, Joe wasn't moved over to TV when the opportunity was there. And they were saying, well, no, because TV is not for him. But all the other markets, mm -hmm. their radio guys were doing TV. That's a good point. Yep. So, you know, I don't know about the politicking involved. Uh, I guess that, that'd be a whole show in itself. Mm -hmm. But it was it was difficult when Joe wasn't included in in that move over. But that's mm. that's life in our business. Yeah, well, he's still working, right? And yeah. That's the best part, you know. Hey, and and I think that's one thing to really recognize is the fact that you had the opportunity. <sighs> mm -hmm. uh, and we talk about brands. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know, is there a bigger, maybe even better? You tell me, brand to work with when it comes to the National Hockey League than the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, and the NHL worldwide brand, Real Madrid soccer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've always said, and my daughter was in Madrid uh, uh, visiting us this past winter. We were at a game down low right off the bench, and I said, 82,000 fans here, not one of them care about the Maple Leafs game tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, Maple Leafs, an absolute huge brand, no matter where we go. And, and I, I recall a trip walking through the airport in Johannesburg, South Africa, and hearing Henny, and I turn around, guy with hair to hair, he's Australian, never been to Canada, never seen a Leaf game ever in person, but he was a huge Toronto Maple Leaf fan, and he followed the team and all its broadcasters and whatnot. He knew exactly who I was, and the same usual questions, when are we going to win a Stanley Cup? But this was a guy from Australia in Johannesburg, South Africa, and I think that just said it all. That blows me away. Yeah. You know, and I think it would be fair to say that even though you are now in, you know, semi-retirement, that, you know, you are still following the team somewhat, yeah. maybe not as tightly, obviously, uh, as you once did. But I think there would probably still be a connection for you. I am not a Leaf fan. I am a Leaf follower. Mm -hmm. I do so because it's part of my business. It's a part of the area that we live in. But I do have a certain amount of feeling for Leaf fans, for right. what they go through, the dedication that they put in. And, you know, you and I had a chat about 2020 on CHCH, and this was a team with the likes of an Austin Matthews and uh, a Mitch Marner, mm -hmm. the, the beginnings of the core four. Yeah. And I just want our director, Mike, to roll this clip, please. But this was a big, big year as far as going through the ups and downs and the expectations, and yet there they were in a playoff position. So all in all, I think a good learning year for this hockey club. It's only going to get better. The elite talent is so elite. They've got to add a few pieces here, especially defensively. But I don't think they're that far away moving forward. They're not that far away going forward. Henny, we're yes. still waiting. I know we are. And, and, you know, I was 10 when they last won the cup. 
and the pressure. It's, it's like driving up the Jolly Cut here in Hamilton and you see those different sedimentary layers that were all underwater at one point in time. That's the legacy of this current leaf group having to carry all those layers. I can't believe you just compared the leaves to the, to the escarpment. That's wonderful. <laughs> it, 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 it just is. And, you know, they can only be responsible for what they're responsible for. This is as talented a group, Bubba, as I've been a part of. And maybe even more so than some of the earlier 90s groups, but in early 2000s under Pat Quinn and Pat Burns prior to that. But they're not as much of a team, I don't think. Uh, uh, those other four lines, say, you know, uh, 92, 93, 94, the, the, well, 93, 94, you would you had a lot more balance and so now everything is top heavy in terms of the core five core five mm -hmm. uh, you know morgan riley uh, who's under a great deal as far as the team is concerned but where do they go now with this current group because obviously it's not happening my only concern is if you bail too early and you can't blow it up because then you'll never get as close as you are now and i know how close are we 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 haven't gotten past a first round except for once in the last eight years but I, I look at Steve Eiserman and they wanted him run out of town. Scotty Bowman taught, talked to him and said, we don't care if you score 49 goals a year. We need you to play both ends of the ice. And, you know, things change in great management decisions. They won three Stanley Cups. They don't win them if they trade Steve. And the Capitals don't win a cup if they trade Alex Ovechkin. And they wanted him out of town because they, you know, just thought he wasn't working hard enough. He's just a goal-scoring machine. So I, I, I don't know. I'm perplexed with this group as to what you do um, and what you can do. Uh, John Tavares is going to be gone in a year, I think, unless there's a, a, a hometown discount but Mitch is coming up as of July 1 they can extend him do they extend him or do you get him to agree to waive his no movement clause maybe bring uh, a package in that would have to include a good goaltender a gritty right-handed shot defenseman and a really decent forward second third line I'm not talking fourth line I, I don't know if you're going to get that I just don't know if you're going to be able to replace what a 100-point or 90-point guy is going to do. But, you know, you argue, what has Mitch done in the postseason? And that's a good argument. Uh, I think following that ankle sprain, he was not the same player uh, that we saw. And we talked about it on the phone the other day. Uh, he, 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 had, he was turned into north-south. He wasn't east-west nor He wasn't an all-compass player. I think that really had an effect on him. Uh, I'm not the general manager of the club. I would hate to see him go because I just don't think we're going to be able to replace him. But maybe this team needs something like this, much much like the, which happened with the bringing in of Kawhi Leonard. You yeah, know, well, it's the biggest example of all time. I, I, I think it is. Sport, Exa right? and, 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 and they year, won a championship. And ba-boom. Like a, a team that had been knocking on the door with DeMar DeRozan yeah. and, and Kyle Lowry. Like yeah. they, they made such great teams. Mm -hmm. They kept running into LeBron or Washington would upset them. Yeah. It, it, and it was not just a couple of years. It was a number of years. Oh. Frustrated Ra Raptor fans right. because you knew how good they were. Yeah. Setting records with wins. And yes, you're right. The one move was made and, you know, and the crazy thing was Kawhi only played like 65 games that year, but it was enough. Load and management. even when he load management yeah. got introduced, they were still winning those games that he wasn't there. Maybe the culture was yeah. a different culture. Yeah. But let me ask you about Mitch, because you're right. He's a special athlete. Oh. He, well, I've seen this guy from London. I know you have as well, too. Uh, there's not much. This guy could take a puck out of a phone booth. Like yeah. This guy is something else. But there's a disconnect may, help me may, i'm just this is my observation the the you know unfortunately he i maybe under the nervous or the lights and i can't believe he'd be nervous but you know he made the comment about you know the leafs are like God. gods like or like god like mm -hmm. you know people gods, yeah. like people were upset about that you know i do think from a personal standpoint of being in this in those scrums at times and hearing them refer to the reporters as you guys yeah like what what's what's up there i don't know and there's enough media management by steve keel and his team at mlsc who are fantastic manage the message manage the message sometimes i think it's too managed um I don't think Mitch meant to say it the way he meant to say it. Uh, I, I, I think, you know, we're placed on pedestals would have been a more appropriate thing. But, you know, we say things in the moment in a bank of cameras and so much frustration, knowing he wished he could have done better, didn't do better, and it's the same epilogue 
for another year. Uh, and fans let down. That could all change next year. It might not, but it could all change next year. Uh, I, I, I don't know if he regrets having said it, but I know what he meant to say, and it wasn't God's. And the fact of the matter is, they are treated like God's. I'm telling you, having traveled with that club and going everywhere, uh, and, and Mitch is such a good guy. I, I know my wife went through health problems, and, and my daughter Caroline is a good friend of Mitch's, uh, going back to the days when she was at Western, he played for the Knights. Um, she got a jersey, Mitch on a Sunday after game, invited her over to his place. He signed it all and it raised over $1,000 for ovarian cancer research. That's what I remember. Uh, Mitch is a hell of a person. He's an incredible player. And if he's allowed to stay here in Toronto and they're able to win a cup, he and Austin will be the next two inductees onto Legends Row. And I know we can get sort of centered in on the immediate and, and be really frustrated with him, but we had Larry Murphy, we had Jake Gardner, two outstanding <laughs> players, two great people. Larry went on to win cups in Detroit, Jake did not, but uh, both really good hockey players. It's just the nature of the beast in this market. Pick somebody out and jump all over him and Mitch is the latest target. Another target, maybe, uh, and taking full responsibility. I thought which I thought was really neat to see the responsibility that he absorbed mm -hmm. for his team was the head coach Sheldon Keefe. Oh. What 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 should what in your opinion should his future be? I'd like to see him stay on. I think the fact that he came on to media day and provided what he did when he did not have to come out uh, may be an in indication that he's not coming back and this was his opportunity to to say what he had to say got to travel with Sheldon a couple of years in the postseason the most memorable being 2018 when the Marlies won the Calder we're talking long bus trips to Albany Hershey and just uh, what he did to manage that group and win a Calder Cup He's always been a winner wherever he's been. He's a good hockey coach. He also, you know, back to back to back 100 point seasons. I was there in Arizona when he, his wife, um, his mother-in-law lives in Arizona. How excited they were and how excited we were for him for the opportunity of replacing Mike Babcock. And um, you realize there's a shelf life to all of this. Uh, and I, I just think, I know the fan base are going to want changes. They're not necessarily going to want, they're going to want maybe Mitch traded, but he's got a no movement clause. Mm -hmm. And so that may not happen, but you can fire a coach, even though Sheldon's got two years left. He's a tremendous coach. He's a tremendous person. He's going to get hired really quickly, much, not long after, uh, I think, the ax comes down. And unfortunately, I think it's going to come down here because of, of the pressure to make a move of some sort. And maybe it's time for a different message in the room, and that's just the nature of that beast. Well, the old saying, uh, you're hired to be fired. And, right. uh, and that, that goes for coaches at any level, mm -hmm. uh, a professional level in any sport. You know, Penny, this has been great chatting with you. I, I don't want to take up your whole day, oh. but I, I want to kind of finish up at least with this. Uh, I do something called picture time every once in mm -hmm. a while. I'll just roll video or show pictures sure. of someone, and then you just react. So yeah. let's, let's just roll uh, video number one. Dan McLean called me 30 seconds after I did my first broadcast, and I've said, total class act. I love this guy. He's up in Owen Sound right now, and he was the anchor. There's Dick Beddows on the left, the man who hired me in November of 1981. Uh, we had our differences at times, but what a bright guy, uh, what a cantankerous guy on air. He was truly entertainment, and when you talk old school, Dick and, and Dan for that matter as well um, just so smooth uh, he could sit down with a prime minister a president and uh, there's there's Henny tweets uh, back in the day and, and hair sponsored by Alexanian carpet right <laughs> You, you know, you're talking, that was our new building, right? That's the old building, and it's now a big hole in the ground. It's going to be a condominium. But uh, getting a chance to uh, to share, and here we are. Here we are now all these years later. 41-year career, Bubba. I was on with you and Steve Foxcroft, uh, mm -hmm. in, you know, and I guess uh, Halton Cable. And yep. it just, it was such a great show because mm -hmm. we were talking Burlington High School mm -hmm. sports. And uh, we, we had you on our show. It was like, oh, my goodness. Like, uh, this is amazing. Kind of how I feel now. Yeah, same yep. here. I haven't <laughs> lost that passion. You still got it. And that's why you're still doing it, mm -hmm. right? And, and you, you love your backyard, and, and so do I. I do. Video number two. Connie Smith, look at the hair on that day. 
I remember Dick Beddoes referring to her on air as his climactic cupcake, Constance Smith, because Connie used to do the weather. Um, and Connie out of Mohawk College, and uh, we just celebrated her 70th birthday this past December, and Connie looks as good now as she did then. Uh, an anchor, a reporter, and what Connie brought to work, it was her heart, her passion. Uh, she just loved her job, and she's still doing it at times. And she drove this little green Triumph. I remember mm -hmm. I had a little Renault Le Car secondhand car, and Connie Le Car, Le car <laughs> and Connie comes in with her green Triumph. Just for me, it was like a little movie star because <laughs> I'd seen her on air living in Mississauga, and mm -hmm. I was getting a chance to work and share in a mm -hmm. newsroom with with Connie and Burlington Girl, and just a good person. Just well, a really good person. And the fact that she, to this day, is out still doing community work, is still as well known in these parts yep. as she was back in those days, yeah, goes to show you her dedication to the community. I, I had her on here. She was, I think, maybe my third guest here. Uh, the numbers were massive. Uh -huh. They really was. And it wasn't just sports people. People sure. wanted to just know what Connie was up to. She's a good person. She and really was. And a testimony to uh, her passion for, for the work. Video number three. Please. Okay, I don't have my glasses on. Well, is this the 90s? Is this Vancouver, Toronto, 94 play? Oh, it's Bob McGill. <laughs> Big Daddy. Um, he's my best friend. I'll tell you right now, he's my best friend. We worked together for such a long time. Um, I called him on his birthday just a week and a half ago, and he, he always ends it off with, love you, brother, and I, I, love, I love him, Bubba. He had two strokes back to back in the summer of 2016 and called me at six in the morning from hospital, uh, just saying, you know, he couldn't talk. And hey, I've had a stroke, and, and, and this guy battled back, and he was ready for training camp. He's got such a huge heart, and he has a record, Bubba, that will never be broken broken. He 263 penalty minutes as a 19-year-old in his rookie year with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm -hmm. Half the stuff he did, you would be suspended for minimum of 10 <laughs> games. So that record will never be touched. He, I remember he, he was in a fight in a game in Chicago and he had this big circle in between his eyes. His brother was there, but you're not telling the coach. He and his, his brother was down watching um, and, and uh, they went to TGIFs afterwards and had margaritas and the, you know, the black spot went away. The other thing was he fought his brother three times in junior hockey. I said, how could you fight your brother? And he said, well, I'm a right-handed shot and he played left wing. No, I said, that's not what I meant. <laughs> you know, you were going into the same corners together. He fought his brother three times and he was a middleweight a middleweight he's got such a huge heart he's he's he, you know i talk about connie being a good person big daddy's that as well oh man i'm mm -hmm. oh yeah um let me leave you on this one here that's awesome yeah I, I'm, I'm so glad that you mean and that, that's someone that you work with and again we put all the time on uh, on the air and uh, you said to be and sometimes we go our separate ways after we mm -hmm. retire and move on but uh, to see that you guys are still close oh. means a lot I, I don't know you have no idea how many times I'm up on me beliefs that mm -hmm. you know on a Saturday or Wednesday night up at Maple Leafs uh, media row yeah. and seeing you two going back and forth the old Muppets uh, like in the balcony too, Stel Stelic kind of pumping in a little bit yeah I'm just kind of off to the side listening yeah. to you guys and I'm like like I, this is like a dream for me listening to you guys uh, hammer on each other it is just uh go yeah. for wow yeah that's special special stuff let Truly. me leave you, leave you with this here yeah. um you know you see broadcasting in its heyday CHCH in its in its that's ultimate right. heyday in the 80s and 90s um and I'm sure you're you're still in touch with the you know key people and see and watch the television mm -hmm. where are we with sports broadcasting today where am I in sports broadcast? Where are we in oh, terms of uh, as oh, a, as it's, an a it, it's a different deal uh, in terms of fan response, and all you have to do is go on social media. Um, mm -hmm. e <laughs> People hiding behind keyboard. I think there's a lot. There's not as much respect as there used to be. Mm -hmm. And call me old school for that. But you, you bring respect. Um, you know, I look at the young generation in this newsroom. I, I got a chance to meet them. Total respect. So I, I see a lot of hope in that regard. Um, but it's the uh, expectations. I don't want to use the word entitlement because I'm really sounding old. Mm -hmm. I know the Leafs haven't won a cup since 1967. Mm -hmm. But they're going to win a cup. It's going to be like Boston winning their first in baseball after all those years and then a few followed after that it's going to be incredible and as big as the celebration was for the Raptors the Leafs will easily double that with all due respect to the Toronto Raptors and their fans um, but it's just 
<laughs> I don't know, it's not as personal, I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not as easy to cover the Maple Leafs as it used to be, where you can sit down beside a player, talk with them, like a Tom Fitzgerald, an Alan McCauley, mm -hmm. Travis Dermott, Luke Shen, uh, Morgan Riley, and they trusting you, uh, that they, uh, you know, uh, that Marcus Foligno, I remember he's in Buffalo, uh, in, in, in a visiting game, and Dan Bilesman was the coach, and he was just saying, we're always looking over our backs um, here because we're afraid to make a mistake. I didn't go to air with that, mm -hmm. um, but, it, you know, him trusting us uh, and myself that uh, I was going to do the right thing and just, you just to travel with them, just a person who wants to talk. This was a visiting team guy mm -hmm. but you know you get to see these guys a lot over the course of the career um, and they, they they learn to trust you so I think it's the respect part of it but I think it will come it's just it's such a volatile world these days politically uh, you know there's a polarization of everything I just wish there was more common ground because when you've got common ground whether it be a little bit left or a little bit right it's a more peaceful time rather than extreme this, extreme that. And if there's no middle, <laughs> then you get civil war. So we gotta keep the middle going. And as we get older, you gravitate more toward the middle because the extremes don't mean as much to you as they once did when you were younger. So uh, it's a long answer to uh, a very short question, but I, I just, I'd like to see more respect today in everything and uh, not just sports. Well, I the old Aretha Franklin word respect uh, is just a yeah. just a little minor piece of the respect that I have for you oh, thank and you. getting to see your career uh, ha be motivated by it. I brought this up with you. I'll just share it quickly with uh, our listeners and viewers about me coming in on a career day. Uh, I couldn't tell if I was in grade seven or eight, but I was in in, in primary yeah. school. And knowing that I only wanted to do one of two things in my life, and that was be either an air traffic controlman or a sportscaster. Oh, yeah. And my parents would not have it that I would be an air traffic controlman because at that time, prior to all the computers that we have, uh, the job uh, was a, a really high stress job and they didn't want me going down that route. I love sports, so I chose sports. And I remember on this career day coming to the old CHCH building yeah. and going up those stairs yes. and seeing you and Ken Welch and Freddie, uh, Anderton. Freddie Anderton and and all uh, uh, Boilio the the the, the can he do it Tim Boyle Tim Boyle Tim, Tim Boyle. Yeah, we, we actually dropped a shot and of him in his dad. Like that too like yeah. and and seeing you guys banging our way on your typewriters writing your scripts yeah. and you know you guys had some visuals and all these tapes yeah. and like. It was it, that was like boom, I'm in, yeah. and you, you were know, locked. I'm locked, and I end up going to Mohawk, and then I said, I've had raw opportunities doing yeah. things in sports television that I never dreamed yeah. or dreamt that I could ever ever accomplish or be part. But you are a major part of that, as Thank I talked you. to you about earl earlier in the OUA game of the week. So to have you here uh, and talk shop and 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 about the days, and as I said, the glory days of this station as well, to a real treat for me. I hope it was, and in fact, I'm confirming mm -hmm. that it was a treat for the people that listen and watch his podcast. Thank you, Paul, for coming in. Thank you. And a future generation will leap off your shoulders and take CHCH into the next generation, Bubba. And uh, if I can feel a part of having inspired you along with the rest of us, then that makes me feel great because you've inspired others as well. Will you come back? Will do. Pleasure. Folks, that's uh, your Sportsline podcast for the day. And as you've just seen and heard, we love talking sports. And if you do know of an athlete, team, or event to promote the Sportsline podcast, want to hear from you. Please hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe button. And if you have something to say, please do. We like your comments. For the wonderful people that make the Sportsline podcast possible, thank you so very much. And we'll see you tomorrow.